Hello guys, Danny here, and today we're starting a brand new series called Etrian Odyssey. Um, now, we are going to play each of the games in order. Um, this is obviously Etrian Odyssey 1, uh, released by Atlas in 2007 for the Nintendo DS. I purchased all of these games on launch, um, but much to my shame, I don't remember completing them. <laughs> <laughs> um, which is weird, right? Because I love um, dungeon calling RPGs. Um, if you've been about my channel enough, you you would understand that um, I am definitely about that. Like I, I played through like Wizardry one through five, and um, this series in particular pretty much expands on that on, on those particular Wizardry games quite a bit. Um, I do own all the games physically. Um, but I'm playing this by an emulator because it's easier to record and looks better doing so. So without further ado, let's get to it. One day in a small, isolated town of Etria, an underground forest was discovered. The Radhar governors of Etria issued a proclamation throughout the continent. Any able-bodied adventurer was invited to investigate the forest and explore its depths. But no matter how many came to investigate the dungeon, none gained renown they sought. As more adventurers tried and failed to conquer it, it became known by a new name. The Yggdrasil Labyrinth. You are the latest adventurer to journey to Etria in response to Radhar's proclamation. You have but one goal, explore the forest to win fame and fortune. Etria is at hand. Okay, so obviously there's more going on than we suspect then. And, uh, well, it looks like we've only got, like, one place that we can go to right now, and that's the Explorers Guild, so let's go. <laughs> Haven't seen you before, I take it you come here to check out the Yggdrasil Labyrinth? And welcome, friend. Not many guilds lately are emitting new adventurers. Those short-sighted losers care too much about the trifles to do any real investigation. You got the guts? You should make a guild entirely of newcomers. There are loads of guys just sitting on their thumbs who join any guild that take them. How about it? Gonna make a guild? Well, it seems like you've just told me that, like, I'm not gonna be able to join any other guild, so uh, I guess I guess we got it, right? Great, but let's get started. Write down what you want to call this guild on this ledger here. Someday the world will know this name, so think carefully before choosing it. Alright, so, um, yeah, we're just going to call ourselves Wizardry. <laughs> Wizardry, huh? Not a bad name. Now that you've got a guild, you'll need adventurers to fill it. And once you can go into Lamprop yourself, you've got the stones and register your own name as a member. More adventurers means more options open to you, but less of a chance of dying down there. He's basically telling you, hey, listen, man, fill out your party because uh, you can get wrecked otherwise. <laughs> Think about it for a while and make sure you register a variety of classes to suit your needs. All right, so the first guy that we're going to make is called um, Arcus. And he is going, like, we got a choice of a bunch of different classes here. So the land effect, uh, um, basically the um, the DPS melee class, effectively. They bear a wide range of weapons and armor in close combat, balance warriors to the front line. Survivors, fleet footed and wise in the ways of the forest, their bow skills make them desirable allies. Fast acting fighters useful in either line. Protector, holy defenders of the weak, a protector's sword and shield are invaluable tools in the dungeon. Um, spoilers, Tarkus is going to be a protector. Um, Dark Hunter, pinpoint lashes of their whip can weaken opponents. Their user skills mostly to turn the tide of battle. A medic, unskilled in battle, their healing arts are experience wise to survive difficult battles. Um, yeah, we're definitely going to be having one of those in our party. An alchemist, they study the control of nature, the power of fire, ice and lightning is at their command. And a troubadour, lively dancers and singers who inspire the party. Their support is always welcome in combat. In other words, a bard. <laughs> so, um, yeah, as I said, mentioned before, um, 
uh, Tarkus here is going to become a protector. And, uh, ooh, wow, okay. Um, I guess that's Tarkus. All right. Next card is going to be called Vash. And he's going to be good, and he's going to be a land effect. Right. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Um, we're definitely going to have a alchemist on our team. I like them too much not to have them. Um, I quite like the alchemist, actually. And uh, that's definitely what Mev would look like. And then um, we're also going to have a medic because uh, heating is important. Uh, this guy is going to be called Luna. Yeah, I'd prefer that one actually. And you know what? We're having one more character called Strider, and she is going to be a survivalist. After all, we're entering into a forest, so having somebody that actually knows how to forage and track animals and stuff like that, I think it'll be pretty useful. Um, yeah, that's definitely the character I'm picking. All right. Uh, we are good for now. Uh, let's talk to our man here. You sign up a good crew? If you didn't, give it some thought. You'll regret it later. In other words, like, don't pick all medics. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, your guild doesn't have a single member. Oh, you've got the guts, but you need the brain to see. Try again when you've got some members. Alright, okay. Uh, yeah, okay, he wants me to actually... Like... So, uh... Harkus and Vash can go here. Um, we'll have Strider in the back. Alright, so um, we've got a bunch of different options here. We're actually going to go down to the pub first, which makes things a little weird. Welcome, don't think I've seen your face here before. You new in town? You got going down to Lavin. You should visit Radha first. Every venture's got to go through Radha Hall before they're officially recognised. Sorry hun, but my hands are tied. I can't give you any work until then. Are you fucking kidding me? Is this game set in England or something? You got a license for that, mate? You got a license to be down here? Oh, God. Once you're legit, I come see me again, alright? I'll be looking forward to it. Alright, so, um, yeah. She won't talk to us, so I guess we go to Radahol Hall then and see what they want us to do to become fucking licensed adventurers, I guess. This is Radar Hall, home to Etrin's governing body. I assume you, I assume newcomers that you are in route to investigate the forest. Oh, we don't recognize anyone who just manages to throw together a guild. If you wish to become a licensed adventurer's first complete mission we give you. A new mission is available. Okay, yep. Alright, so accept mission. Adventurer's intuition. Adventurers must be tested by mapping the first floor of the labyrinth. Meet the soldier on the first floor for the details. Okay, so we'll do that. The mission is to create a map of the first floor of the lamp, but as an initiation. Those you cannot accomplish as elementary tasks are better off staying out in the forest. Explore the floor, first floor, and everything you see there. This method will be useful later. And yes, this game really does rely on you making your own maps. There's no auto-mapping in this game. That's just something I really enjoy. It, it actually makes the bottom half of the actual 3DS a uh, essentially graph paper and that's really ingenious it doesn't because back in the day when the the the, 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 uh, the nintendo ds first came out they used to use like a bunch of really shitty gimmicks to make use of all the features of the actual console and stuff but this one felt organic and right and i really like that so yeah there's a small map for you 
fill in the rest with details the best you can. And you'll notice now on the bottom right we've got some graph paper. Now go to the forest and get the details from the soldier on the first floor. Okay, let's talk to this guy, see what he says. Hey Rather Hall, we both come nature and promote investigation of the lavender. When adventurers discover new beasts and objects, we are equipped to note their findings. It'd be a great help with explorers of wizardry if you were to contribute as well. Okay, so we'll leave. Um, we're not gonna go immediately down there. Um, first of all, um, we're actually gonna go to Sh Shakya's Goods. Hello! New items, weapons, equipment, I'm your girl! The two guild I've been hearing about with your new folk. But she sounds like a northerner. Suppose like you are my best customers. I look forward to doing business with you. Alright, so um we need to buy a bunch of stuff here. So uh, in terms of weapons, we definitely need a bow. Uh we get we need a better sword. And uh, we need a hatchet. Um in terms of armor. Um, one of our classes actually requires a tag to become useful, so we're going to actually buy two tags. And we're actually going to um, start equipping here. Right, so... you notice that these guys are all armed with knives and tweed armor. It's not very effective, so um, we need to... Um, we need to make sure that this character... These characters are actually uh, equipped with a decent stuff. So what I'm going to do here is have my deep. Oh, my DPS um, is going to be the axe user, and my tank here is going to be a sword user. So we don't fight over good weapons. Um, Strider, on the other hand, can't attack the, with the back row with some nice, so she gets a wooden bow. Um, and that's all the equipment we have right now. Uh, we are going to sell these bath knives back to the shop, because you don't want them. Um, there are some other things that we could be buying here. For example, there's some accessories here, like high belts and, uh, like, war trams which decrease the encounter rate, but we don't need that right now. Um, let's talk to the shopkeeper. Be sure and surprised that he hadn't been able to make anything good. Anything you find in the forest, bring it here and I'll buy anything you bring to me. That's actually very important because the more monster MacGuffins you sell to this woman, the more equipment she can make, which means you have access to better equipment. Um, which is good. Uh, next thing is we go to the Cast Apothecary. Welcome to Mercia. You stand in the town's apothecary, where we heal the wounded and the fallen. You also will offer medicine to take with you. An ounce of pre prevention is worth a pound of cure. And he's actually not joking about that, because resurrecting your guys is really expensive. If you're wounded in the forest and you come back here, we'll do everything we can for you. Right, so, um, we're actually going to buy, um, a few of these um, medicines here, just to make sure that um, in case the healer goes down or whatever, that we actually have um, some stuff. And you'll notice that um, we've got like a few items here. Um, we're not going to go too crazy with that sort of stuff. And uh, I think that is it. Take yourselves at home. Uh, let's talk to the cat first. Don't push yourself too hard. You can come here anytime and rest your weary bodies. Sleep the night through or nap until evening. Either way, we can accommodate you. Alright, so we're gonna save so you guys can hear the the bopping save music here. In future episodes, I'll be cutting this part out, but <laughs> uh, very nice. All right, and um. That is going to be it for this episode. Thank you very much, guys. Um, when we return, we'll be actually exploring the dungeon for the first time. So I'll see you guys then. Goodbye.